Welcome back to the Midday Show. We are going to get to the cooking. Thanks to Brody White joining us from the Chop and Block. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. We're not actually cooking today. Though, I know, this is kind of funny, but it smells so amazing in yeah. here. Something has been cooking. I know that for sure. Yeah, uh, we'll re reveal that later. Okay, but, yeah. okay. So what are we talking about then? Uh, we're doing raw beef today. So mm -hmm. we're going to do two different dishes, uh, beef carpaccio and beef tartare. Okay. okay. Two different regions. Uh, you know, tartare is mainly a French dish, mm -hmm. and then carpaccio is more Italian. Okay. Yeah. So we're starting Italian. Starting Italian, yeah. So okay. we start with, for carpaccio, you want a really good cut of meat. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we're, carpaccio is sliced, and then we're, we're going to pound it out a little bit. So mm -hmm. you want a really good cut of meat. I'm using tenderloin here. Mm -hmm. So a nice little end piece of tenderloin. You want to slice it really thin. And a good sharp knife, obviously. Yeah, and a good sharp knife. So what I've also done here is stuck this, this beef in the, in the fridge, or in the freezer for uh, about an hour before I, before I slice it. So, oh, it's so a that makes stiffer. it a little easier a little to cut? A little stiffer and a little easier to cut, yeah. Ooh, that's a really good tip. Uh, now, I don't normally think about eating beef raw. A lot but of it's people okay, don't. it's yeah, safe. It is okay, yeah. As long as you get really good, fresh beef, mm -hmm. okay? There's two different systems out there. There is uh, mass centralized production. Mm -hmm. That one I would probably stay away from. So beef that's been processed in Alberta and then transported to BC. Mm -hmm. And that's generally what we find on grocery store shelves. Right. So for something raw, there's just not a lot of control there. Uh, a lot of unknowns. Um, I probably would stay away from that if I was going to make a carpaccio or make Okay. A, uh, well, what we do at the store uh, is whole animal butchery. So we get our animals whole. Uh, they're from our region, and we cut them fresh. So just tell your butcher this is what you want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, best is probably uh, call maybe a day or two ahead so they can get something that's really going to suit your purpose. Mm -hmm. And it'll, it'll be nice and fresh. They'll cut it for you that, that morning, uh, and then you can... You can be sh absolutely sure that it's going to be good to eat. That's awesome. Yeah. And obviously, the tenderloin is a great cut for this sort of thing. Tenderloin is a great cut for that. Yeah, absolutely. Especially carpaccio. So we've just done our, our, our thin slices here. Okay, I love the hammer. Okay, yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> this, is our, this is our meat. Probably a little bit more than we need right now, but we're just going to take it and just pound, pound it out, out a little bit. bit. So how thin do you want something like this? Fairly thin? Fairly thin, but Fairly you, thin. you still want you still want texture uh, when you're eating. Mm -hmm. You don't want something that's just paper thin and you can't really, you know, process, right? Right, there's no flavor to it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, now there's some really nice marbling in this. Is that something that you should look for as Not well? Not too much. Not too uh, much? You know, especially for carpaccio, you want a little bit, and but too much marbling. I mean, fat is not the best raw. Delicious on a crispy ribeye. Right. It's fresh off the grill, but mm -hmm. you know, raw, not so much. So you don't want those big white strands through. No, you don't. And Just this is minimal. and this is strictly intermuscular fat, so mm -hmm. it's not something that's on the outside. I've trimmed all that mm -hmm. right clear. Mm -hmm. and yeah, because normally it comes with a little bit on the bottom, right? Yeah, on a tenderloin, there's actually quite a lot more fat than than you would think. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've trimmed it all away. Can I just keep this for later? Yeah. This would just be fun. That's yeah. awesome. Our sal. Oh. So now we, we've chilled this plate down really well. <laughs> sat in the freezer with the beef. Oh, okay. So it's nice and cold. So many great tips. Like, I yeah. would have never thought to do something like that. Absolutely. So then, because, you know, it's summertime. You want to eat something that's nice and fresh. Sometimes you mm -hmm. just don't want to grill. You don't want to stand by the grill. You're definitely not turning on the oven. Yeah, you're staying away from all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. So we're just going to lay this out really well. And this would be considered uh, an appetizer, basically? Or could you use uh, it as a main you course? You could use it as a main course, for sure. Okay. I mean, for a light eater, mm -hmm. um, you might want to, to have a bit of a side, maybe you know, some grilled vegetables or something mm -hmm. like that with it. But we've got our, we're just going to lay this out. I think, you know, to be totally honest, I think this would serve uh, two people mm -hmm. for a light meal, maybe lunch or lunch by the lake with a nice mm, sounding good like all of your suggestions glass of white wine <laughs> absolutely okay <laughs> okay so this is our carpaccio i've just got it laid out here mm -hmm. and then another key thing is is with raw meat obviously seasoning you don't have any caramelization or any sort of roasting flavors to to add to it to add to it yeah no so flavors that you can cook into it's it it's just the beef right so right. you want to focus on your seasoning so i've got a little Peach vinaigrette here. Oh, peach vinaigrette. How lovely. Gonna... And peaches are just in season right now. Yeah, so absolutely. Perfect. I actually was given some lovely peaches. That's why I oh, nice. chose peaches. So basically peaches 
and a little bit of oil in there. Yeah, peaches, oil, lemon juice. Um, it's actually a peach white balsamic vinegar that we've used. Oh, okay. Uh, but it's a little sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, for my taste, so we put, we we did uh, some lemon juice as well. Okay, just to cut the sweetness. Yeah, a little absolutely. Bit. So okay. So just like really good seasoning. You want to you know don't be afraid to use your fingers here and get it. Get really, in there. Get it nice. So you and want covered. everything covered. You don't absolutely. just want it gently on absolutely. there. Absolutely. Okay. And then we're gonna do some nice coarse salt. And obviously this isn't something you're gonna flip over and do on the other side. So this is nope, just on the top. This is just on the top. Okay. Nice. As you eat it, you know you're gonna use your knife and fork, so you're gonna mix mm -hmm. it up a little bit. And then some fresh cracked pepper. The smells are starting to come together too. It's uh, it's it's very nice and light with that peach vinaigrette. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. yeah obviously, beef is is you know, can be a heavy dish, mm -hmm. but this is what you know. This is the time of year. It's really hot out. You just want to eat fresh. Mm -hmm. But beef is still a good option for sure. Okay, so what have you done here? So here I've got some marinated uh, peach slices with some slivered almonds and some arugula to kind of pair with our vinaigrette there. It looks delicious. And we're just gonna spread this out. So the, you know, almonds for crunch, uh, peaches for sweetness and texture, just to kind of round out the dish. And then you got a nice crunchy arugula. A little bit more vinaigrette here. Oh, nice. And so this is something you should make and eat right away. Absolutely. Yeah, we're just going outside enjoy. right now. The wine's already poured. You know, and then, the then here we go. <laughs> we're just going to pick it up and yeah. go on our merry little way. And that's absolutely. it. Yeah. It looks beautiful. Like, the colors are absolutely stunning. Just gorgeous. Absolutely. Very so, yeah. nice. So, yeah, the key for this is just, you know, picking a really nice fresh beef. Mm -hmm. um, so we use our Devic Ranch beef. It's been dry aged. Uh, but just call us up and ask us for a nice fresh cut that you can use for, for a carpaccio. Uh, and when we come back, we're actually gonna do a, a steak tartare, which is really nice. Okay, this is exciting. We're gonna be back with more, not cooking, but eating, perhaps, here on the Midday Set. We'll be back in just a moment. We are cooking for the heat today here on the Midday Show. Joining us, we've got Brody White from the Chop and Block, and we're making two wonderful dishes, and this is the second one. So what's this one all about? Okay, so this is steak tartare, or mm -hmm. beef tartare. Uh, probably one of my favorite dishes, hands down. Really? Uh, absolutely. I lived in France for three years and just ate steak tartare everywhere I could possibly do it. Okay, so obviously the cut is very important. Actually, the cut is less important Interesting. than carpaccio, where it's okay. something that needs to be absolutely tender. Uh, you just pounded it out a little bit, but it needs to absolutely melt in your mouth. Mm -hmm. But because we're cutting this quite fine, uh, you know, there's a few more options. Okay. Uh, there will be some people out there that say tenderloin, um, and steak cuts are good for tartare, mm -hmm. which is not wrong, but I tend to lean towards the more flavorful cuts that you might not always think about. So okay. uh, hanger steaks, skirt steaks, flank steaks. Uh, flank steak might be a little tough, but uh, this is actually a different muscle from the flank of the beef. It sits right beside the flank steak that everybody knows and loves. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the inside skirt. The inside skirt. Yeah, so, or a bevet. I love the names. It's also called a bevet. So that's, it's just a big triangle. It looks very pretty. It almost looks like it has pleats in it. I took a lot off it to make it look pretty. Okay, to make it look pleated? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. But, um, so yeah, it's, you can you can cut it into steaks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a marinating steak, and then mm -hmm. you can grill it. Probably best served, you know, rare to medium rare. Mm -hmm. uh, but today we're going to serve, serve it raw. Uh, I chose this cut because you can see there's co really coarse grains in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's a, it's a working muscle on the flank of the beef, mm -hmm. so it's, there's going to be lots of flavor there. Okay. Okay, we're not going to use all of this. There's just two of us here. Because so. that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you've kept this chilled and everything? I mean, that's absolutely, a big part yeah, of the process, right? Absolutely, a huge right? part of the process. Keep everything very, very cold. So all our ingredients here, we're sitting on ice. We're mm -hmm. going to mix it up on ice. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to cut this, and you're going to stick it back in the cooler for me. Okay. So now I'm just going to work away and cut it as fine as I possibly can with an excellent knife and great cutting technique, which I have neither of. So <laughs> obviously you're just gonna have to make this for me. <laughs> yeah, so you're just gonna do thin, thin strips and we're gonna cut it the other way. So I started with the grain. Mm -hmm. So the grain's running this way. So starting cutting with the grain, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna finish against the grain. Okay, so you're gonna cut it up smaller. Yes, absolutely. So we got our okay. strips there. I'm gonna turn those strips perpendicular and then go again. 
Now you come from uh, a chef background, so yeah. this is something that's that's easy for you. Uh, is this something that somebody could attempt at home? Who doesn't have a chef background? Yeah, there. You know, you can actually grind it. A lot of people have the little attachments for their kitchen kitchen aids as well. And just do it that way. So you could do it that way. Okay. What I really highly suggest, if you do choose to go with the grinder, mm -hmm. um, partially freeze your meat. So it's it's quite firm to the touch. You can feel that it's you know soft inside, but okay. it's it's quite you know firm if, if not frozen on the outside. Key being, you want to cut the beef as it goes through the grinder and not smash it up and, and right. mash it up. Okay. And make it into hamburger. That's, yeah, not the, that, that's not the plan. No, that's just not the plan. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a weird texture as you eat it. Um, it's going to be more mushy than it will be crunchy. Right. Know. So it loses a lot. It does if, lose if you a lot. Do it yeah. That way. So if you do use the grinder, which is not wrong, we mm -hmm. you know we, in the restaurants when you're serving upwards of 200 people a day, you have to. You, you couldn't you, possibly do this. No, you couldn't. You could try, but it'd be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're gonna stick this just on the plate here. Actually, that's quite a bit. Once you cut it up like that, yeah, there's a it, lot there. Yeah, there is a lot there. This this is a probably a serving for two, or one of me. <laughs> One for Brody or two yeah. or three other people. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you just to stick that in the sure. cooler and then we're going to make our sauce. Okay. So I don't know if you can see this here, but here we've got our uh, egg yolk, so raw egg yolk, shallots, parsley, uh, chopped capers, and some cut up uh, house made pickles. Oh, yeah. that sounds lovely. It is lovely. So we're just going to mix that up. We're basically making uh, an emulsified dressing or vinaigrette, mm -hmm. and then we're going to mix our beef into that. And you actually have this on ice, as you were mentioning earlier, because it's very important to keep this cool as well. Everything's got to be cold, like not only for f food safety concerns, but mm -hmm. just for, you know, mouthfeel and texture and, and taste. It's it's fresh. It's got to be fresh. Nice. And, it, nice. and then on top of that, uh, the mechanics of making an emulsified vinaigrette, everything works better when it's really cold. When it's cold, okay. okay. That makes sense. So if sense. you could just hold that bowl for me. While I, I can hold that. both the bowls. So we're going to mix it. Well, we add our oil. We don't need a ton of it, but we're just gonna get it. I kind of feel like I'm on like the Rachel Ray show or something, like except he's actually Rachel <laughs> except Ray. I'm and Rachel I'm Ray. His helper. <laughs> well, Rachel Ray's pretty good if she can do this all by herself. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> okay, so that's what our emulsified vinaigrette is gonna look like. Uh, it doesn't split at all. It looks like one homogeneous. Texture. The colors are really pretty in that too. Absolutely. Just do a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. You don't want to go too heavy because you have salted capers and you know pickles with the vinegar. In right. There. So there's already a lot of salt in there. Yeah. Okay. So that's about ready. Mm -hmm. now I'll take our meat back. Okay. The part that I actually get to help with. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then we're gonna season our beef as well. Okay. Yes, and because there's nothing on this at this there's point. There's nothing on this. So okay. again, key to when you're eating raw, it's got to be well seasoned, not over seasoned, or it's just it's not nice. It's going to be weird. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I've, 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 I've chosen to spread it out on this plate so I can really see where I'm seasoning it. Mm -hmm. And I can get a better feel because I want every bit to be seasoned but not over seasoned. Nice. Okay, so that's probably good there. A little more pepper. And then while I do this, maybe you can grab that wooden plate there. For sure. So then we just take our beef. Put it right inside. Right into the, the, the dressing. And then just give me a really good mix. And so obviously, since this needs to be so chilled and so cold, once you make this, have it in the fridge just till your guests arrive or till you're you ready to eat. You don't even, you want to do it when everybody's sitting down. This dish especially, like you can already see here, uh, the beef is starting to go a little gray. Okay. That's the acids in the dressing cooking the meat. Oh, and, that's and you not don't want to cook want. the meat. No. And for, especially for steak tartare, you want it just, you want to eat it now. Okay, so okay. once you make it, it goes out. Traditional tartare service is done at the table. Oh, so okay. in a restaurant, you know, there'd be a, a waiter mixing everything and, and then just, just serving it Piling at the it table. in, okay. So this is a beautiful tray that you've got here. So we're gonna get the tray. We're gonna get our other garnish going. It's turning out to be quite the lunch hour. <laughs> so what would you normally eat this with? Like you've got yeah. some some veggies so here. That's an important question. Um, the, you have to have fried potatoes, fried potatoes, and some crusty bread. I don't okay. Know. So what we've we've got today is our fried potatoes, and we've actually 
since I'm a butcher, I'm frying them in beef fat. So. <laughs> and that's what we've been smelling all, yeah. all afternoon here. It smells delicious. So we're just gonna get our beef in this little mold here. If we can. It looks so nice. Oh, and home cut fries. This is really the perfect meal. <laughs> Don't forget the salt. A very important component yeah. to everything, right? <laughs> absolutely. Wow, that looks so good and it smells, the, the fries smell absolutely delicious. Just like that. You made it look easy. <laughs> it is easy. Dinner is served yeah. just like yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. And with highs of 36 today, yeah. this is the perfect thing. That's what I'm having for dinner for sure. <laughs> Actually, you're going to eat it right now with yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to be back in just a moment here on Midday.